May the Lord be with you. Welcome, McClure, to uh, welcome to McClure United Methodist Church and Weston United Methodist Church. It is a Sunday morning worship service. We are meeting here in McClure United Methodist Church. Last week I came to you by myself from home, and this week we have our liturgist James Howe, and we have our uh, uh, pianist uh, Kayleen Atkinson with me. Uh, Chrissy would have been here this morning, who is our bass player. But uh, she's not sure if she may, be, uh, may have been exposed to something in her job out at the prison. So uh, if you would, do remember to keep Chrissy in your prayers. Um, she's just stayed home as a precaution this morning, and hopefully uh, she'll be able to be with us in the uh, coming weeks. Uh, we will be doing worship this way for the foreseeable future, sadly, because, well, the bishop has asked us to. That's the main reason we do things and the main reason we adjust some things, uh, what was it, Friday I believe it was, Saturday, yesterday, yes, I uh, read the bishop's letter, that's another one of these videos that's on uh, Facebook. Uh, I'm just going to give you the highlights today. Uh, 2020 General Conference has been postponed, this is not our annual conference, but I'm sure it will be postponed also, and we'll find out and know more about when that stuff's going to happen. Uh, let's see, uh, he has also asked us to not hold public worship through Easter. Um, we will see how things play out and we do not know how much longer, uh, but as soon as we know something, we will let everyone know and uh, stuff like that. Um, I really cannot imagine not having circuses Holy Week. Uh, it is my prayer that God will stop this craziness and uh, intervene on our behalf and allow us to uh, get back to some of these things that uh, we like to do. Uh, it is UMCOR Sunday, United Methodist Committee on Relief. Uh, if you were here in worship, you'd have one of these little uh, uh, folder things in your uh, offering. Um, they are busy right now. They are very busy right now. We are the hospital to two-thirds of the world. We are the health clinics. We are the doctors, the nurses, the hands, the feet, the everything. Uh, UMCOR is the first to respond everywhere. I love how we beat the Red Cross. I love how we beat the militaries from every nation on earth. I love how this is one of the ways we are the church everywhere. Um, this is one of those ones that if everyone that was supposed to be in worship, we've raised over six million, I'm sure they're going to need more than six million this year. Um, so uh, whenever you get the opportunity to come back in, and give generously towards it. Uh, we got our certificate this past week from the Heifer Project for the uh, Heifer that McClure United Methodist uh, did for uh, uh, our uh, Advent project, and uh, so uh, the certificate will be out in the uh, hallway for us. Uh, do an announcement here because this is probably just the best place for it. The churches, both in West and in McClure, need your funds still and need you to continue giving. Um, you can give by either mailing it in to McClure, which is Post Office Box 24, McClure, Ohio, 43534. Once again, Post Office Box 24, McClure, Ohio, 43534. And Weston United Methodist Church is Post Office Box 333, Weston, Ohio, 43569. Weston UMC PO Box 333, Weston Ohio 43569. Um, as far as things going on, um, most things are in, 
If there's, if there's more than 10 people, we're not supposed to be doing it. So any of our ministries that have less than 10 people, uh, we're okay for doing it. So, uh, you know, we think of accordingly and stuff like that. And uh, we will try to get through these times. Um, and uh, with that, um, let's go to our prelude. Let's prepare our hearts for worshiping the Lord.
found on page number 361, Rock of Ages. Just hiding and don't know what to do. 
Give them your peace. Give them your courage, Lord, and help them to be able to know that you are with us all. We ask, Lord, that you will continue to be with your church in these times. Help us not to be afraid, but help us, Lord, to know that you are with us and that you are guiding us. Help us as your people, Lord, to remember your love and to live in it. We ask, Lord, that you would be with those who are in the nursing homes. We pray especially for them, Lord, especially if they are in total lockdown and just stuck in their rooms. Lord, be with them. Help their days to be good. Put joy upon their hearts and be with those who take care of them. Help them to be able to do it with joy and with happiness and with hope. Watch over them all. Keep their halls wonderful places filled with your love and your happiness. Be with them. We pray, Lord, for our communities, for all those things that we would be doing, for all those things that we would like to be doing. We pray for our businesses, Lord. We ask that you will be with their owners, that you would help them through these times, and that you would allow all things to go well for our communities. We pray, Lord, for our first responders. We ask, Lord, that you will keep them both safe, both here in McClure and in Weston, and that you will allow them to be able to serve your children and your people with that joy of heart that they have done for so long. Watch over them as they care for us. Continue, Lord, to be in all things, in all places, and through all things in all places. Help us to know that you are ever with us. We give you thanks. We give you praise. We pray these things in your Son Jesus' holy name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now we will do our responsive reading this morning which would be found on page number 125 in the hymnals, Canticle Covenant Faithfulness. Seek the Lord who now is present. Call upon the Lord who is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return, that the Lord may have mercy on them, that our God may abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and return not but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I intend and prosper in the thing for which I sent it. The Old Testament reading this morning is Micah chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. With what shall I come before the Lord, and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before Him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? 
the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice and to do love and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading this morning comes to us from 1 Thessalonians, from the 5th chapter, verses 12 through 24. But we appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you, and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you. Esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves, and we urge you, beloved, to admonish the idlers. Encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, and be patient with all of them. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the Spirit. Do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to that which is good, and abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Thank you, Lord. This morning, we would, should be looking at Wesley, social action, and us today. Doesn't seem like there's much social action today, does there? Right now, it seems like we've shut everything down, or it's just getting more and more and more and more and more so. If you're paying attention to numbers, you see some fear numbers going up. You see some other good numbers going up, too, as in those who have recovered. You know, I don't think they... they Give us those numbers enough and often enough. Because people are recovering. God is being good. Well, social action, John Wesley believed there was no holiness but social holiness. That Christianity could not be lived in a vacuum by yourself. That it just wasn't possible. Because who could you love if you were just by yourself? No one. And so he believed that we had to interact with people. Well, about 150 years after John Wesley's heart was warmed in 1908, inspired by the social gospel that was being preached at the time about all the ills of society, the Methodist Episcopal Church set down on paper its very first social creed. The current United Methodist social creed is in your hymnal somewhere around 890. In case you'd like to look at it and see how we think society should be ordered and uh, played, played out and such. Well, it's also been something rather similar adopted by the Federation Council of Churches and other assorted groups. We were one of the first. Now, Wesley never spoke of the social gospel. Never. He did not in any way, shape, or form go to the far reaches of saying that in no way, shape, or form that the social gospel should live out and speak out. Now, like I've already said, he already said, there is no religion but social and no holiness but social holiness. But Wesley knew there was dangers in riches. We know there's dangers in riches. Sometimes that's all people are worried about. You know, um, the stock market has lost a third of its value. Plain and simple, it has. Everyone's retirement plans has taken a hit. Everyone, everywhere. If you are young, you still have lots of years to make it up. But those who are older are worried now. Because let's face it, when our stock market loses a third of its value, 
What happens to the things that we have invested in that stock market? It loses a third of its value. So we are being attacked both in our wallets, we're being attacked in our health, we're being attacked in our mental state too, if you're watching the news regularly. Because they keep saying over and over and over how scary, how bad, how this, how that. And that is where we are today. That's why there's just a couple of us here leading worship and everybody else is at home. It's an amazing time. Well, Wesley was worried about wealth, especially unconsecrated wealth. Because unconsecrated wealth had this tendency of seeing other people as something to be bought and sold and used. Slavery was very much alive in Wesley's day. Thanks to the work of people like John Wesley and John Newton, the guy who wrote Amazing Grace, slavery was getting ready to be ended in, in England. Slavery was ended in the British Empire, supposedly, in the year 1750. Now, they couldn't enforce it anywhere where slavery already existed, but they said there would be no new slaves bought or sold. To Wesley, this was the greatest evil of his day, that there was nothing worse than this. He saw the poor houses, which really weren't houses, they were prisons. That's what the poor house was. We don't realize that today. We think the poor house is a homeless shelter. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. If you've ever heard Taylor Moyer speak at one of our uh, history presentations, he did one on the Henry County uh, home. And we actually had a really, really good one. They took really good care of people there. But so many of those places were just places where people, you know, you, you're too poor to own your own place. You're too poor to eat. You're too poor to this. This is where we're going to put you, and you're going to be an indentured servant, and you're going to work here for all your days. John Wesley got the Methodists organized, and they bought people out of those places. They bought them out of those places, and they raised them up in their lives. Very similar to some of the things that are being done in, like, the Heifer Project, and things that are being done in, like, um, Society of St. Andrew's uh, Gleaning Projects. All these things were they would work and look and care after others. Wesley and the United Methodists were such a part of it. Wesley believed that a, that a Methodist had a particular nature to him. And that's actually a sermon of his that we're going to look at in a couple of weeks. Right now, we're going to look at a couple of parts of it. He said a Methodist is one who has the love of God shed abroad in their heart by the Holy Ghost given unto them. One who loves the Lord his God with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his mind, and with all his strength. And that he that loveth God loves his brother also, and accordingly loves his neighbor as himself, and he loves every man as his own soul. What a great way to describe a faith in a people, isn't it? When we look in the mirror, do we see people like that? That's the question we have to ask ourselves each morning as we look into the mirror, isn't it? Because that's the fact. That's the thing. That's where God calls us to be. That's how we got the general rules of our society. You know, there's three little ones that I talk about from time to time. That first one of do no harm, he really means that. If you can't help someone, don't look at them poorly. If you can't help someone, find someone who can and take them to them. 